I have a few years experience with React and have used it here and there with Ionic in the past, but Angular has always been my go-to for Ionic development. But I wanted to make a video series for people who already know and use Angular, but want to know a bit more about what building apps with Ionic and React looks like. So this first video is going to be a rapid fire look at some of the key differences between building an Angular application and a React application. So before we even get into looking at an Ionic and React application, uh, we can consider some of the key conceptual differences between Angular and modern React development. And of course, I'm gonna throw in the obligatory disclaimer, this is not an Angular versus React video. I'm not making any claims as to which is better. I don't think a generalized claim to one being better is even sensible. I like Angular and React. I build with both of them quite a bit. I generally prefer building Ionic apps with Angular, but that is just my preference. So let's start with the framework that we already know, Angular. So some key conceptual aspects of Angular are that it takes a batteries included approach. It has class-based components. It has special Angular syntax for templates. It uses modules and it uses dependency injection. On the other hand, React has a more bring your own approach where not everything you are likely to need is included by default. It uses function components, it uses hooks, and it uses JSX for templates. So I'm not gonna bang on too much about all of that. There are plenty of articles and videos out there discussing the conceptual differences between Angular and React. Let's just focus on the Ionic stuff mainly and jump right into a freshly generated Ionic and React app. Okay, so the basic ideas for the structure of the application are very similar to Angular and most other frameworks. We're just working with a bunch of nested components. So we can go into the index.tsx file and although there is some different React stuff going on, we still have the app component here being rendered out just like we would with the root component in our Angular applications. And if we take a look at that app component, once again, it is pretty similar. Our app component is made up of a bunch of other components. So we have our app component being defined here. Inside of that, we have an Ion app component, an Ion React router component, a home component, and so on. So what is quite different to Angular is how these components are created. Now, first of all, you might notice that the Ionic component tags look a bit different than the way they do in Angular. Everything is using this uh, title case and it's also being imported specifically from Ionic React. So where other approaches like Angular use the Ionic's web components as web components directly, uh, for React, the Ionic web components are wrapped inside of a React specific component. So aside from having to import each Ionic component that you want to use and using title case instead of kebab case, this doesn't really add too much drama to your life. So in terms of actually creating the component itself, you might notice that we are just exporting a function called app. And that function returns some JSX for the template. So some shorthand is being used here, which might make it look a bit more confusing. So we could, for example, expand this out and we also have this weird react.fc thing here, which just adds typing information for React function components, which we will keep. But if I remove that just for now, you might sort of more clearly see that this is literally just a function being assigned to a variable and it's returning some uh, JSX. There isn't anything really too uh, special happening here. Okay, so let's just put that back to the way it was before. Okay, so we can create components by just creating a simple function that returns a template. So that's pretty cool, but components provide more than just a template. So where does all the logic and the variables and stuff like that go? So let's move on over to the home page to start talking through some of that stuff. So we have the same basic ideas here as our app component, but we have what looks like a more typical Ionic page with a header, a content area, toolbar, and so on. Now, as you probably know, a function can do more than just provide a return value. If we want to create a variable, for example, that's no problem, we can just add it to our function. So now I have a variable called my title within this function. And then we can even use that value in the template. So I might want to replace the title here with the variable title or my title. 
And now you can see that that value is being used for the title. So this would feel very familiar to you if you're coming from using interpolations in Angular with the double curly braces. Now you just use one instead. We can also use those curly braces to execute conditional logic in our templates. So if I wanted to check what the value of this variable is before rendering something to the template, I can just add that to uh, between the curly braces we can check to see what my title equals, and then we can supply two different sets of JSX that we want to return under each condition. So now if I save that, we get an output saying the title is hello. If I change this to a not equals, it changes to the title is not hello. In an Angular component, we might also want to trigger a method on our class from the template. So how would we do something like that here? So we can also define additional methods inside of our React function component. So as well as just defining a simple variable, I could create a, another variable here that has a function assigned to it. So now we have a function called say hello that's going to log out hello to the console. And now I could add a button to my template to trigger that method. Uh, all I need to do is say set up an ion button and we will just say hello. And remember, we do need to import that button as well. So it will add that to our Ionic React imports. We can just add ion button there as well. And then we can just add an on click handler and call our say hello method. So I'll just bring up the dev tools for us to look at. I'll bring up the console there. And if we click hello, we can see that hello is being logged out to the console as we'd expect. Okay, so what about if we wanted to get some logic going and have our button increment a counter on the screen instead? So let's try and do that in a way that makes sense given this sort of function component setup we have. So what I might do is create a value for my counter. So we'll let current value equals zero and we'll have a method to increment that counter. So I'll create a function called increment and all this is going to do is increment the current value. So let's also just render out that current value to our template and we will change this button here from being a hello button to triggering that increment method. So the idea here now is that it starts on zero and every time we click that button, we want it to increase by one. So let's see what happens when we actually click the button. So as you can see, I'm clicking the button, but absolutely nothing is happening. So everything up until this point has probably been reasonably intuitive. And uh, now we are getting into parts of React that are more Reacty. So the reason this doesn't work is because to determine what is rendered out to the screen, React will run our function component. So this is just a function after all, it's going to be called, it returns a value, that value is a template and that is what React is going to render. So everything is evaluated and output to the screen. But this happens once and that's it. So if we then trigger our method that is going to increase the value of this little bit in the template, it doesn't actually cause React to re-render the template for us. It's still just going to use that initial template that was returned. So this is where hooks come into the picture. Instead of having a variable that I am incrementing here, I could instead use the use state hook. So what we need to do is import use state from React. And instead of setting up this current value variable here, I am going to use the use state hook. So we use a destructuring assignment here to set current value to the actual value that we want. And the second assignment here set current value is a method to update the current value and then we can just supply use state with a default value to begin with and then in our increment method rather than directly trying to increment current value we will instead use the set current value method that we got from the use state hook so i'll call set current value current value plus one and we can just keep the normal current value in the template because that's still what that is called. So if I save that and if we try to click on this again, we can see that now the template actually updates and we can see that increasing value. So we can also use hooks to handle situations where we would usually rely on lifecycle hooks like Angular's ng on init. 
So let's say we have some code we want to run when the component is first created. We could do that using the use effect hook. So as well as use state, I'm now going to import use effect and we can supply use effect with a function containing the code that we want to run. In this case, I am just going to log out hello. So once again, we'll save that and we will pull up the debugging window. So if I just refresh this now, we can see that hello is logged out. And so that's behaving just like an ng on init would. The code is triggered once when the page is first loaded. But let's see what happens when we click on this button here. We can see that our use effect hook is being triggered every single time this button is clicked, which isn't what we want at all. We wanted something that would just run once when the component was first created. So this sort of behavior might be what you want in some cases, but it's not what we want in this case. So we can also supply use effect with an array of values we want to watch. So if none of those values have changed, then the use effect function won't be triggered. If we only ever want to run the use effect once, we can just supply it with an empty array. So we're essentially saying to the use effect here, we want to run this whenever anything in this array changes. And since the array is empty, it's never going to run again. So let's save that. We'll get our debugging window up again and refresh it. So we have that initial hello being logged out, which is what we want. And now when we click on this button, we aren't getting that code running additional times. So by default, Angular's change detection is more or less something that just happens automatically. And the template is updated as you would expect. With React, it is something you need to pay a little bit more attention to, and you'll want to make sure you aren't triggering unintended renders or executing code that you didn't intend to. So there is a lot more you can do with hooks and a lot more to know about React in general, of course. However, hopefully this paints a picture of some of the key differences between the approaches of Angular and React. In future videos, we will dive into some more specific areas. So if you are an Angular developer or you've used Angular and just starting to look at React, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me cover that perhaps you find a bit confusing or you did find confusing, uh, please leave a comment below. And if you like this video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.